to this video in today's video we are talking about the admission of DRC the Democratic Republic of Congo into ESC East African Commission in 2019 the Democratic Republic of Congo the DRC applied to join the East African community if this application is approved and there is a highly likelihood that it will given that it has gone uh, through successive stages DRC will become the ESC's seventh member after Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, South Sudan and Burundi so what is ESC and what does it do and why is DRC interested in joining this uh, organization? ESC stands for East African Community, it's a regional intergovernmental organization in East Africa which comprises of six partner states and it has its headquarters in Tanzania. This organization is home to 177 million citizens and it's guided by a treaty which was signed on November 1999 establishing the commission that entered into force on 7th July 2000 following its ratification by the original three partner states that is Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda. So this establishment of the East African community uh, in 2000 was a revival of a different uh, organization that was uh, comprised of these three states but they failed due to some ideological reasons so in subsequent years it was revived and in 2000 and 2000 uh, it was uh, the three countries that is Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania rat ratified the East African Treaty and that gave rise to formation of this organization. Later Rwanda and Burundi acceded to ESC Treaty in June 18th in 2007 and they became full members of this organization uh, from 1st July in 2007. Later the Republic of South Sudan acceded to the treaty on 15th April 2016 and then became a full member on 15th August in 2016. So that makes the membership of this organization into six. If DRC joins then there will be seven members in this organization. So ESC is one of the fastest growing uh, regional economic blocks in the world and having progressed from custom union uh, there has this establishment of common market in 2010 and the implementation of monetary union protocol and political federations are in progress so looking at the integration pillars or what ESC aims at started with custom union then moved to com uh, common market currently the monetary union protocol is being implemented and its highest pillar is political federation where these countries will come together to form a political federation where they will be under one rule having similar uh, ha having same constitution and so many other uh, aspects that will form that political uh, confederation so the common starting with the common uh, union the customs union sorry is the first regional integration milestone and critical foundation of the east african community it has been in force since 2009 as defined in the article 75 of the treaty for the establishment of the east african community custom union means that east african community 
partner states have agreed to establish a free trade uh, or zero duty imposed on goods and services among themselves and they also have agreed on common external tariffs whereby imports from those countries which are outside the ESC zone are subjected to the same tariff when they are sold to any East African community partner state. Goods moving freely within the ESC uh, region must comply to ESC rules of origin and with certain provision for the protocol for the establishment of the East African Community Custom Union. The second pillar is the common market and it has been enforced since 2010 in line with the provision of the ESC treaty the one that follows custom union and custom union became fully fledged in January 2010 and that's where common market now kicked off so the aim of this custom mar common market is to accelerate economic growth and development it basically means that the East African community partner states may have to maintain a liberal stance towards the four freedom of movement for all factors of production and tool rights between themselves. So these freedoms and rights include East African citizens are free to move from one region to the other. There's guaranteed free movement of goods, free movement of persons, free movement of labor or workers, right of, of establishment, right of residence, free movement of services, and even free movement of uh, capital. So underlying the ESC common market are operational principles of the community which are non-discrimination of nationals, of other partner states on the grounds of nationality, equal treatment of nationals of other partner states, there is transparency in matters concerning the other partner states, and then there is supposed to be shared information for the smooth implementation of protocol. So this guarantees that goods, services, capital, workers, uh, persons are free to move from one country to the other without restriction. So this came into effect in 2010 and its implementation is going, although there's, there has been some challenges uh, between the member states, partner states. The third pillar is monetary union, the East African Monetary Union. This is an important stage in the process of ESC regional integration. East African Monetary Union was adopted in accordance with the ESC Treaty and was signed in 30th November 2013. It lays groundwork for the Monetary Union within 10 years and allows the East African Community Partner States to progressively uh, converge their currencies into a single currency in the community. In the run-up to achieving a single currency, the ESC partner states aim to harmonize monetary and fiscal policies, harmonize financial payment and settlement system systems, there, there is harmonization of financial accounting and reporting practices, harmonization of policies and standards on uh, statistical information and establishment of East African Central Bank. So this is ongoing. Uh, some of these uh, objectives have been achieved, others uh, are ongoing, although there's, there, are, there are also some challenges uh, that has occurred as far as of implementation of these pillars is concerned. The highest pillar is political federation, which is the ultimate goal of the ESC regional integration. It comes after custom unions, common market, and monetary union. It is provided for under the Article 5.2 of the Treaty for the Establishment of the East African Community and founded on three pillars, that is common, foreign and security policies, good governance and effective implementation of the prior stages of the integration, that is uh, custom union, common market and monetary union. So this process has been slow. It has not uh, it has not kicked off in earnest 
but some steps have been taken up especially uh, uh, issues to do with the uh, laying groundwork that is construction uh, making process and uh, even in 2017 the East African heads of states uh, adopted the political confederation as a transition model uh, of the East African political federation so this process is ongoing and uh, soon an announcement will be made on how this will play out so those are the integration pillars so ESC aims at becoming one political federation and the entrance of DRC we will see how that plays out because that a region that is will be so big uh, how it will be managed that remains a question that needs to be answered also the other states that are we also interested in joining the East African community we have Sudan which had applied to join the community but its application was rejected because of uh, various issues including the fact that it's a fall off from uh, East Africa at that time Sudan uh, South Sudan has not joined and also the the upheavals the upheavals in that country and also the treatment of uh, citizens especially those which are of uh, black in that country Somalia has had also applied for admission into this uh, organization but it's application has been pending one because verification has not been done and also the turmoil that is in that country uh, and also prob probably relation its relationship with Kenya has also contributed to uh, this uh, verification process which has not yet been done to also help in understanding how the uh, admission of uh, DRC and other countries goes it's also important to understand how uh, this organization is structured. So let's look at uh, the organs of ESC and probably try to understand uh, the process that this uh, application will go through. So this application is an uh, application for a country to join the ESC is supposed to uh, move in stages. So for, for us to be able to understand uh, the organs that are, 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 I mean, that play out, it's important that we look at the organs of the ESC. The main organ of ESC are the summit, we have the Council of Ministers, the Coordinating Committee, the Sectoral Committees, the East African Court of Justice, and then we have the East African uh, Legislative Assembly, and then we have this, the Secretariat. The summit comprises of the head of government of partner states and is the body that gives strategic di direction towards the realization of the goal and objective of the community. So this is the body that will receive the final report on admission of DRC and when this body makes a decision then uh, the process that is supposed to be followed after approval will kick off. Then we have the Council of Ministers. This comprises of the uh, ministers from uh, various uh, ministry, especially ministry which are charged or with the role of, uh, I mean, East African Community. Then we have the Coordinating Committee, the Sectoral Committee. We have the East African Court of Justice, which is also very important. Uh, for example, we had a case uh, where a citizen of Uganda had gone to this court to bar this process of verifying DRC uh, to have it stopped because uh, they, they felt that uh, DRC has not uh, has not complied with all the requirements of joining this body or this organization. Then we have the East African Legislative Assembly, which is the Parliament of East Africa, and this uh, consists of representatives from all the countries, uh, partner states, and then we have the Secretariat, which is the exec executive organ of the community. 
the process of uh, verification what it involves first it starts with the invitation so a member state a current member state can invite a member for example DRC was invited by Tanzania Tanzania has also invited other countries Malawi uh, which uh, currently does not uh, I mean may be interested but uh, there are some issues that they want to iron out before they join uh, the, the organization uh, so it first starts with the invitation by a member uh, state then the country is supposed to make an, a formal application DRC did this in 2019 the current president uh, Felix uh, did an application in 2019 for this uh, for the country to be admitted in East African community once that application is made the summit discusses it and if the country uh, has qualified then the government or uh, the secretariat forms a team that is supposed to verify so the next step is verification and uh, verification involves checking whether the country meets the criteria that is uh, stipulated in the East African Treaty uh, the criteria involves checking on whether the country has accept accepted the ESC as it explained in the treaty checking whether the country adheres to the principles of good governance democracy and rule of law and also observance of human rights and social justice this one area that uh, the Ugandan lawyer uh, was quoting when he was taking uh, when, when, he, when he appealed to the Court of uh, Justice the East African Court of Justice to reject the verification of DRC because he felt that this DRC has had not met these criteria. It also looks at the potential contribution to the strengthening of the integration within East Africa, the geographical closeness to the uh, to an inter interdependence between the applying country and the ES ESC member states. So this criteria that was used to reject the application of Sudan. The, the, the Sudan, the northern part of the Sudan, uh, but this was before uh, South Sudan was uh, independent. And then the establishment and maintenance of a market economy, uh, perhaps this is one of the factors that has led to probably Ethiopia not being a member of this East Africa, despite its closeness to East Africa, uh, because its, its market is mostly controlled by the state and then having social and uh, economic policies that are compatible with those of ESC so a country that meets all these criteria is the one that will be approved for for I mean to join the ESC so they uh, so before the DRC can fully the ESC there is a verification process as which we have uh, talked about the criteria uh, and that uh, it has to be completed and therefore and thereafter that presentation has to be uh, made to the East African heads of state for acceptance verification exercise was conducted uh, from June, June 23rd to July 3rd and the verification team comprised of three experts from each of the six partner states. Its findings are to be discussed at various levels and forwarded to East African community head of states for acceptance. The verification mission reviewed the current state of the DRC with regard to the criteria that is international law established and also all the criteria that have been we have stipulated. So the East African Treaty stipulates that uh, as a precondition for admission into the bloc, the summit must verify and ascertain that the new member adhere to the universally accepted principle of good governance, human rights, democracy, rule of law, uh, and other factors. 
So the summit is yet to meet, perhaps when they meet uh, later in November, uh, that decision will be made. There is high likelihood that uh, application for DRC to join ESC will be accepted. And this 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 seen by the preparations that have been done. For example, in the 21st summit, which was held in February, uh, French was also incorporated as one of the official language in the ESC uh, region. Other languages include Kiswahili and English. French is the language that is spoken uh, by most people in in uh, DRC. And also the eastern part, the, the, the Swahili is spoken there, but French is the official language in DRC. So with acceptance of this, uh, or inclusion of French as one of the lingua franca in ESC, uh, has been seen as a preparation for acceptance of uh, DRC into ESC. So what are the benefits that DRC and also the East African community members or partner states uh, bound to gain through this admission? The pending acceptance of DRC into the ESC has several benefits to the countries in the region and also to DRC itself. As we know, DRC is the largest it's a large country with a population of approximately 87 million people and it's one of the highest, uh, it's one of the biggest or the largest in uh, Africa. The country is well endowed with natural resources and has the world's second largest rain forest, the Congo forest. DRC would bring a huge market for the region uh, exporters and also provide a venue for the DRC to solve disputes between Rwanda and Uganda that goes back, way back into decades. DRC is also a good source of raw materials. The country has a lot of resources, for example, coca, uh, various minerals, and these minerals are required in uh, other East African countries for manufacturing purposes. So DRC will be a good source. Uh, countries in East Africa will be able to source these goods or raw materials and they can they'll be cheaper because uh, with custom uh, union and common market these goods are bound to be uh, cheaper for the uh, partner states uh, East, other East African state will have is an access to a port on the western side of Africa they have uh, they have uh, heavily relied on ports in the eastern Af in the eastern part of Africa, Dar es Salaam, Tanga, Mombasa, Lamu. So now, with the opening up of the with DRC joining, then they will have a port that they can access and access at good terms in the western part of Africa. So when moving goods to uh, probably in Western African countries, goods can move easily. And this means that we'll be able to access uh, markets even beyond the DRC. Um, so these are some of the benefits uh, that, and there are numerous, there are, there are many, numerous, there are many uh, benefits that these uh, countries are going to enjoy out of admission of uh, DRC into ESC. And this might explain wh uh, why is the, the process has been uh, has been has been done faster than uh, admission of other countries. Remember, we said Somalia was interested, but its uh, application process has been pending uh, due to turmoil in that country, and also the relationship between Kenya and Somalia may have played out. But for DRC, it made application in 2019 and. Uh, probably this year, uh, next month, in the month of November, to be a member of uh, East African Community. Uh, East African Community, despite those uh, the, the benefits that uh, are going to be accrued out of this, has been facing some challenges. Uh, for example, during the COVID uh, uh, period, uh, the relationship between various countries uh, 
uh, was not very good for example between Kenya and Tanzania there were some issues although with the new president these issues are being addressed uh, also there is there is, a, there is a problem between Uganda and Rwanda and also between Burundi and, uh, and uh, Rwanda so these problems have delayed some of the integration pillars and uh, with admission of DRC uh, which also has issues with uh, Rwanda and, and, and uh, Uganda well, probably these issues will be solved and then the integration process can be completed up to the highest level where we want to form a political federation uh, thank you for watching this video we'll do another video on the follow-up especially when uh, DRC uh, decision uh, to join the ESC is made don't forget to subscribe share like and also comment uh, I invite you uh, to another video